Good morning, Emmanuel Church. It is Friday morning as I'm recording this, and we are just about 48 hours away uh, from our first outdoor worship service. Uh, I don't know about you. I've been hearing from some of you that you're excited about that. I don't think anyone is more excited than me. Uh, I am looking so forward to preaching to actual people uh, on Sunday. And so, uh, and just the opportunity to gather with you and to worship with you uh, is a blessing. The uh, folks that showed up last Sunday morning for our prayer time, uh, that was probably the highlight of the last three months for me. And, um, and I'm trusting that Sunday... Uh, we'll top even that. So what I wanted to do, though, we're also about 24 hours into um, your responses to a survey that I sent out yesterday. And thank you so much for that. I've gotten so many wonderful responses uh, and helpful questions and statements as well. And that's really helped us. Uh, so I wanted to address some of those questions uh, so that you can kind of understand um, the position that we've taken about having outdoor services uh, while we also have a live stream, but also some of the things that we're requiring, like face mask and social distancing, uh, there's been a lot of questions in regards to those things. So uh, I, I'm just going to deal with, I think, 10 questions uh, as quickly as I can, but I hope that it will be helpful to you uh, to understand. Uh, number one, uh, this person asked, I assume humorously, uh, it was an unexpected blessing to be able to wear pajamas to church these past months. Are we still permitted to wear them? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, it may even help others social distance from you uh, if you wear your pajamas to church. So by all means, uh, wear your pajamas to church. Number two, uh, why didn't we poll the church to find out what steps all people wanted us to take as we look towards reopening? Uh, listen, Emmanuel is a congregational church. Uh, I We believe very firmly in your voice to speak into what our church is doing. Uh, our entire church government is structured around that. Um, but listen, we all have opinions, uh, and those opi opinions have probably been verified for us by social media, by our cable news network of choice, by the websites we like to frequent, uh, and listen, I have uh, my opinions too, but as I've talked to all of you over the last uh, three months, I have found a wide range of opinions to exist even in our church, all the way from uh, this is a government hoax uh, to uh, this is the end of Western civilization and I'll never leave my house again. Um, but here's the thing. I'm not an epidemiologist. Uh, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, I'm not even a biologist. I don't work for a health department. Uh, so while I have my opinions, uh, I think that there is a great deal of room for humility about what we know and differentiating that from what we think. Um, however, here's the thing. We are blessed as a church uh, to have a few people who work for the Department of Health, uh, to have one person who works for the Department of Mental Health, uh, to have people who work at Albany Medical Center, uh, to have uh, some, uh, some people who work for the State Police Department. Uh, we have sought their counsel um, as to the best practices to move forward. I can tell you personally that I have read countless bulletins issued by uh, the Center for Disease Control, Governor Cuomo. Uh, we've been in contact with the Rensselaer County Department of Health. Uh, I've read, even as I thought about as a church, how do we respond to this? I've read the opinions of Christian attorneys who think through things like uh, religious liberty issues and, and those sorts of things. Um, I have talked to around 45 pastors across the Capitol District to gain a sense of their insights and what their plans were. Um, and these have all been invaluable resources as we think through these things. Uh, and they will continue to be because any policy that we have, these things are not etched in stone. We are uh, moving as fluidly as we can with the information and the recommendations as they come out. Uh, so uh, that's how we arrived at the decisions. Um, I think if we opened it up to the church as a whole, there probably would have been more heat than light that would have been generated from that. Uh, so uh, we're seeking to find the wisest counsel that we can. Number three, 
Do face masks do more harm than good? Aren't they just an ineffective method of conformity? Here's the thing. Uh, the latest guidance from the CDC, it was issued just yesterday as I record that, uh, as I record this, uh, the latest guidelines from the CDC recommends the use of cloth face mask in religious gatherings. Now, it's unclear whether they mean indoors or outdoors. They recommend that churches go outdoors, so I think that they're lumping that in. Uh, now, it says quite clearly that they are essential when uh, there is less than six feet of separation. It clearly recommends their use generally. Uh, we don't want to just do what's essential. Uh, we want to be wise in all that we do. So uh, we know, uh, we know, and you know that uh, that COVID nineteen is transmitted through uh, the mouth and the nose. Uh, so um, while there are some reports that are questioning how effective face masks are, and I think that's a fair discussion for us to have. Uh, there is no question that they are the best preventative step that we can take along with regularly washing and sanitizing our hands, uh, that they're the best step that we can take in preventing uh, the spread of this virus uh, to other people around us. Uh, as, as in regard to them being a, a method of conformity, listen, uh, I can say for myself and for the elders that we're really not concerned with the politicization of face mask and all uh, that goes on with that. What we are concerned about is uh, that many of us, people in our church and many of our neighbors who are around us who might drive by while we're worshiping outdoors or might see us, that they see the use of face mask as a, as a sign of loving your neighbor. Um, this is uh, not something that we are prohibited from doing in Scripture. Uh, and so if we can do it, if it's nothing more, even if face mask were, were one day proven to be completely ineffective, if it's nothing more than an evidence to our neighbors uh, that we love them and to one another that we love them, I think it is uh, well spent. So if you want to think further uh, about this, I would encourage you to go to 1 Corinthians 9.22 uh, or to go to a really excellent article from the Gospel Coalition that I'm going to link down in the uh, description. So I would encourage you to go there. Number three. Are face masks necessary outside if we're also requiring a six-foot separation? There's a lot of questions about face masks. Um, uh, about five out of the ten are going to be about face masks. So are they necessary if we're also outside and distancing by six feet? Here's the thing. Uh, there have been several outbreaks uh, of uh, COVID-19 uh, associated with religious gatherings. And part of that uh, is because of the nature of religious gatherings. We sing, we project our voices. And based on what I've read, when we project our voices, uh, that particularly uh, potentially contaminated uh, breath with uh, all the little spit particles in it uh, can travel twice as far, 10 feet, 12 feet, uh, from the person who's projecting their voice in singing. Um, it, it, so it's it's partly for that reason. We want you to be able to participate in singing. Uh, we want you to be able to talk uh, to one another. Uh, and uh, But that's, that's part of it. It's also partly because, hey, listen, it's hard for us to maintain six feet all the time. Uh, when we were out last Sunday gathering together to pray, I had to continually resist the urge to walk up to someone and hug them after not seeing them for three months. So now multiply that out with, with children and with uh, all the people that are going to be here. Uh, we want to be wise about the fact that it's going to be hard to maintain six feet of distance at all times. Uh, and so, um, listen, as we receive more information uh, from the CDC and the Department of Health, uh, there may be some of these restrictions that we're able to relax, may be able to do away with them completely. As I said before, we're continually reevaluating uh, what we believe the best practices are for us. Uh, number four, won't face mask prevent us from singing? Uh, listen, I, I can tell you plainly uh, that I hate wearing face masks. Um, I hate that when I'm talking to someone wearing face mask, I can't see their face. I 
hate that it muffles my voice in speaking. Uh, I hate that it's going to uh, muffle ours collectively when we sing. But there are three things that I hate more than I hate wearing face masks. Number one, I hate being physically separated from you, my church family, uh, longer than absolutely necessary. The last three months have been difficult uh, being away from all of you. And so I would hate the thought of not seeing you uh, simply because uh, I have to wear a face mask to see you. Uh, I would rather see your eyes uh, than nothing at all. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, I would say uh, the thought that I might unknowingly transmit the virus to someone else, and that might reser- result in their illness, that that might result in their death, Uh, That I hate more than I hate the thought of wearing a face mask. Um, So that's something that's more valuable to me. And then number three, I would say this. I hate more than wearing a face mask the thought uh, that there could be a week that we could gather together and lift our voices in singing, even muffled, that we might lift our voices in singing uh, together, uh, that that would be something that would be prevented because I didn't want to wear a face mask. Listen, if Paul and Silas, their songs in chains in jail can shake the very ground and shake the guard uh, that was there watching them so that he would come to faith in Christ, then I believe with all of my heart that God could use our uh, song behind face mask uh, to shake Southern Rensselaer County. Uh, I just think uh, that our barrier is less uh, than Paul and Silas's and the same God is still the God at work. So uh, will it prevent us from singing? Uh, No, not at all. Will it make it more difficult? Of course, of course. Uh, But in my mind, it is so worth it uh, to be able to join with you and to worship in that way. Uh, Number five, what about those who would struggle to wear face masks for a sustained period of time? Uh, We are sympathetic. We really are sympathetic about the difficulty uh, that some people will have in wearing face masks due to age, due to health conditions, uh, different things. Uh, The first thing I want to say Uh, for you is that our worship service, we will be truncating it down. Uh, Typically, a worship service for us runs from 60 to 75 minutes. Uh, We expect our worship service to run about 45 minutes uh, when we gather together, so it's going to be a little shorter. The second thing I would say is uh, we have approximately 15 parking spaces that are going to be set aside right where we're going to be gathering to worship that are specifically uh, for those people who would like to worship from their car. Now, maybe it's because you don't want to wear wear a face mask. And so you can sit in your car uh, with your windows down and participate in the worship service in that way. What you'll need to do when you arrive, just speak to the parking lot attendants, tell them you'd like one of those parking spots, and they'll direct you to one of them and you can stay in your car Uh, without your face mask and and participate in the worship service uh, that that is going on there. Um, Finally, uh, we know that not everyone is ready to come out and worship outdoors. Uh, There can be a lot of different reasons why that's the case. Uh, That is why uh, we are live streaming the service so that you can participate at the same time, even though it's from your home, Uh, You can participate at the same time with everyone else while they worship. And so, yes, we do know that it's going to be difficult. Um, And for some people, that's going to be more of a barrier for others. I would challenge you, if it's difficult because you just don't like to wear a face mask, man, I'm with you. Uh, But if it's difficult because of health or because of age or different things like that, um, certainly we, we have taken those things into account. Number six, uh, and I think this is the last one about the face mask. Uh, Will the pastor and worship team also be wearing face masks? The answer is yes, Uh, with the exception of while I'm preaching. When I step up to preach, you'll see me take off my face mask. Uh, That's for practical reasons so that I can be heard. Uh, But while I'm preaching, I will also be more than 10 feet away from the nearest person at all times. Uh, so that that will not be a concern. 
uh, and the worship team. When they are singing, when they're leading us in that way, uh, they will not be wearing face masks. Uh, they will be separated, however, both from the crowd and also from one another appropriately, uh, so that transmission is not a concern as they do so. So otherwise, while we're there, yes, we are not exempt uh, from this. Uh, we are going to be wearing them while I'm singing. Before I preach, I'm going to be wearing a face mask. Um, and uh, so we're going to be in this with you together. Number seven, will there be an offering box or a place to give our weekly offerings? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for asking. The offering box will be in the lobby of the church building. Uh, we will have to come in one at a time, even as those coming into the bathroom will be coming in one at a time, but it'll be there uh, and you'll be able to put your offering in that way if you would like to do so. Uh, number eight, and this is an excellent question that we did consider. Uh, what about worshiping in a larger location like the town park? Um, here's the big reason why we decided not to go in that direction. Uh, we knew, as I said before, that some people were not going to be ready or able to worship with us uh, outdoors. So we knew that we would need a strong and reliable internet connection to be able to live stream that video. And unfortunately, uh, that makes places like the town park uh, not able to suit our needs. Uh, they just don't have uh, the internet there for us to be able to live stream the worship service. Um, number nine, uh, should I be concerned that my young children might make noise or need to move around some uh, during the worship service? Now, we want our parents uh, to have control of their children at all times for safety reasons, practical reasons, uh, reasons related to uh, this virus that we're all dealing with. We want you to have control of your kids at all time. Uh, but that said, outdoor services are by nature different from indoor services. Um, I can imagine, and I am not comparing myself to Jesus here, but when Jesus was teaching by the Sea of Galilee, as we've been seeing in the Gospel of Mark, uh, that there would certainly have been children running around. Uh, there would have been children crying. There would have been children laughing. Uh, there would have been parents who needed to get up and tend to their child. Uh, certainly all of those things will be happening in our worship service, and it's going to be delightful uh, to be able to see that. And part of it is, I want your children to have the memory that uh, coronavirus could not stop uh, the church from gathering as soon as we were able to gather, uh, that we valued our corporate, our gathered worship so much uh, that we would gather under circumstances that are inconvenient and maybe even uncomfortable. So yes, by all means, please bring your children. Uh, it will be a sad affair if we don't have the laughter uh, and tears even of young children during our outdoor worship services. So uh, there will be supplies that we'll be sending out that you can print out, coloring sheets and activity sheets uh, that can occupy them. You'll need to do that from home and bring your colors from home, uh, but things that they can work on even as uh, the worship service is going on. So I hope that helps. Uh, I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that I am looking forward to worshiping with you and I hope to see you Sunday.